Hey there, and welcome to a sixth session of the Webflow course. Today we're going to learn about transitions and states so that when you mouse over, it has some transition going on and it goes back to its original state. And then we also have the selected state animation as well as learning a little trick on how I manage to duplicate this menu right here and have a second menu for the tabs component. And then we're going to make everything adaptive across multiple devices. So let's get started. This is where we finish from section five and we're going to select the tab link. And this one is not selected. And we're going to go and click on this drop down right here on the arrow. And this is where we have a bunch of states. In this case, we want to tackle the hover interaction. Notice that we don't have the current class. So make sure that you're not selecting the one that has the current class and to make sure that you have hover. So with tabling hover, we're going to set the style when the user is hovering the element. All we need to change really is just the border color. We're going to go to borders, color and paste the color code. And so that's all there is to it. If we preview this, it's simply going to show the hover state. Since I have this active, it's going to show it by default, but I'm going to preview it again. And this is what happens. But we would like to have some really neat transition. Right now it's instant. So when you mouse over, it just shows in one single frame. When you transition, it's going to add a nice buildup of the animation. So again, clicking on tab link and making sure that we don't have current, I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to go and find transitions. I'm going to add a new one and I can have different types. And these are specific transitions that I want to target. I also can select all properties at the same time. So it's going to auto transition every single property. I'm going to set the 500 for duration and by default it's set to a timing of ease and that's fine. So let's preview this. Basically it's going to transition using a 500 millisecond, which is 0.5 second. And we have this really nice transition. Now what I can say is that we're using all, but I do not suggest this for every single scenario. In this case, I'm planning to have more transitions in the parents in different parts of this container. So it they might conflict. And because they might conflict, I would like to be more specific and just select the animation that I want to animate. In this case, I want to select border. So that's the only part that I want to animate. Let's now do the same for the selected state. So we're going to select this one that is already selected and make sure that it's current. And we're also going to need to select hover as well. So we have both current and hover and then we set the styling. It's going to be background white. So set instead of transparent and the color is going to be black. The border is going to be transparent and we're going to add some box shadow. The angle is 180. The distance is 10 with a blur of 20. Setting the color at 15%. Great. So let's get out of this and we can select the main class, which is tabling. And again, tabling is what is shared across the board. So for current, for hover, for everything, that's why the main class is the one that should be controlling all the transitions. And if you don't do that, then you're going to see that the transition is only going to apply for the border at this point. And uh, everything else is instant. What we need to do is to select the tab without any of those current and hover and add those other transitions. As I mentioned before, you can just put it all and it's just going to be working beautifully. But in this case, 
we want to be specific. So in addition to border, we're also going to add font size to 500 milliseconds. And then the background color, 500 as well. And finally, the box shadow, which is right here for the background property. Perfect. So we have four transitions going on. Let me correct this to 500 milliseconds. And we can test this. You can see it's also animating the font size, the background, and the box shadow. We should also add two more, which is the background position so that we can animate the icon as well. And finally, we should also animate the font color. So font color, and then background position. So for background, set to 500. So far we have six of them and we should have a really nice animation going on. Next, we're going to try to duplicate this menu so that we can have another menu that is going to be about the material, the color, as well as the shadow. So we're gonna cheat a little bit here because we're supposed to have a single menu. But in this case, we wanna have two menus. So one thing I noticed is that you can actually duplicate the tabs menu like this. And when you do that, you just happen to have a second menu using exactly the same class and properties. But we can create a combo class so that we can change the positioning of the second tabs menu. So let's do that. We can do a combo class second. And that's going to be on the first one. And this combo class is specific to the tabs menu, which means that this class cannot be reused anywhere else. And that's why you don't have to be super specific about the class name. You don't have to say tabs menu second. You can just name it second and it's going to be fine. So the other thing is I'm going to change the margin. So I'm going to set to margin top minus 240 and margin left set to 320. So this is my second menu. And for the second menu, I'm going to duplicate more tabs link. So I'm going to go here and right click the type link and duplicate. When I do that, it only duplicates for this one for the first tabs menu, not for um, the original one. So that's great. And at the same time, it creates more tabs pane. So more images that I can use when the user has selected the original items. So let's duplicate some more. Let's do this. And one final time. Voila, we have three new ones. And I'm going to change the text to color material and then shadow. Finally, we want to hide the four first ones. So what we can do here again is to use the combo class. And this time we're going to name it hidden enter and hidden. We're going to set display to hidden. So display none. And this is going to apply to the hidden class. And you can see by this icon that it's hidden and it's no longer appearing here. I'm going to do the same for the first other three and apply hidden as well. And then the last one. Voila. So now I have a first menu that has the four first items. And I duplicated the first menu and I duplicated more items so that it 
reflects into the tabs content, but I use a little trick to display none for those first four so that it doesn't repeat too much itself. Now, remember I mentioned earlier that the second combo class will only be specific to the tab link, so to the first class. Well, you can see that in the styles manager and you can see that, for example, second here is only applicable to the tabs menu and hidden is only applicable to tab link, which means that you don't need to be specific with the naming and uh, you can see the structure of those classes all here. Let me go back and then close these. And then I'm going to create a container for my second menu. So go to tabs menu container, duplicate that. Again, using the same technique, add second. And here I will change some of those properties, starting with the width, which is 220, and then 190 in terms of height. And I'm going to change the margins as well. So the margin is going to be minus 240 from the top. And from the left is going to be 300. The background is going to be white instead. And the box shadow is simply going to be black at 15%. For the second menu tabs links, I'm going to select this one, make sure that it's not current. And also let's add a second class, which will allow us to have specific styles for this second menu links. So I'm going to change the font color to this color code, set the size to 20, make the weight to semi bold and the alignment to left. The design that we're trying to replicate is this, and you can see that the background is different, the shadow is different, and we always show the icons and the text is slightly bigger with different colors. So let's continue with the styling. Um, we're going to set the padding left to 100 and the background go right here. Set the top to 50% because we want to show it all the time. And the left is going to be pushed a little bit to 55 pixels. Voila. Let's get out of this and apply the same second class to the other two links. So second, second to this one as well. The only remaining thing to do is to apply specific icons for each of these buttons. Now we're going to use exactly the same technique. We're going to add more combo classes and this one is just going to be shadow and we're going to change the icon only. So I'm going to scroll down for shadow. You can search it and change to this icon. I'm going to do the same for the other two links. This one is material. Change the background, choose the image, search for style. And then the last one, create a new class called color. Change the background, choose the image, search for color and select that icon. Perfect. Now the last thing I want to show you today is if you want to customize the animation of your current state, maybe have some animation that goes back and forth for the icon, then you need to know how to set the selected state first so that we can customize it. We're going to have to go to the tabs content. And if you select the fifth one, it's going to show the selected state for the fifth one. When you do that, we can see all three classes with current and it applies to one item inside the page, which is just this one. That's because color is specific to this one because of the icon. So what you need to do is select here and delete color. So now we have tab link second and current. Therefore, it applies to three items on this page. 
when you have these, you're going to go to background and change the left positioning to 45 instead of 55. And then if you preview, now when you select, it's going to do a little animation during selection. So as you can see, Webflow can go really deep into the way you want to set up your animations, your transitions, your classes, your combo classes, and it can really accommodate any kind of layout, any kind of interactions. It's really, really powerful. Before we finish, I just want to put back the icon for this one called color. And then we're going to change the images for the extra three tabs. So we're going to start with this one and that's going to be for the color and I'm going to choose the iPhone gold. So this one and for materials, I'm going to go to tab six, click on the image and change it for the iPhone green without the shadow. And lastly, click on the tab seven, change the image and get the one with the shadow. Now to the exciting part of the day, which is to publish it and then to see the glory on the website, on the browser itself. And voila, this is the fruit of our labor. You can click and you can see the animations as well. So that's what we learned today. And as usual, I wanted to take the time to really explain what's going on behind the scene in Webflow so that you can learn the techniques and hopefully apply it to your own layout and have fun at the same time. In the next session, we're going to learn how to animate using skew and move to create a really fun 3D perspective. So I hope to see you then.